controlled by that. I, I need one piece of it. Uh, I just, they didn't respond, so I don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You ready to go? Yes, we can get started. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Uh, all right. It is eight ten. I'd like to call to order the meeting of the Long Range Planning Committee for January six, two thousand twenty three. Uh, as a first order of business tonight, a little off the schedule. I'd like to appoint Robin Sanders as a voting member this evening. And we do have a quorum. Second, my next item on the agenda is the review of minutes of December 2nd, 2022. Can I have a motion? So we we'll we'll approve the minutes. To approve the minutes. So moved. All right. So we have a, uh, a motion and a second. Any discussion? I was yes. I was not here on December, so I will. But if your vote is needed, is my vote is needed to approve these? I would like to get it. Okay. Any other discussion? Seeing none. All in favor? Opposed? Uh, approved unanimously. Second item is the discussion of the zoning ordinance amendments concerning fleet vehicle parking and outdoor storage. Autumn, can you give us a briefing on sure. this? Sure. Um, we spoke about this a couple of months ago, and then we got uh, sidetracked a little bit with the GMO last month, so I've asked Brian to come back. Uh, parking and storage of vehicles used day-to-day -day is not completely addressed in our ordinance, and so fleet vehicles that um, are included with businesses are often, like we were discussing earlier, they're included. You can not park them for more than 24 hours. And so it's an outside storage issue. And so the outside storage is currently defined to prohibit the keeping in an unroofed area of any goods, materials, merchandise, or vehicles in the same place for more than 24 hours. And so that's the way our ordinance currently reads. And um, it's one or more. Vehicles. It's one or more. It's any vehicle. So any vehicle in the parking lot for 24 hours, more than 24 hours is the outside storage. And so this, Brian can speak to it, but he deals with this with several businesses and some some as new people go in they don't they're not aware of it and so we'll get it's kind of complaint driven probably quite a bit um but we see this um coming up and we'd like to offer an opportunity to to fix it for some folks we think we can make it better um so if you work seven days a week it's not a big deal because your vehicles are always moving in and out, right? But if you are off on weekends, it's the same thing. So that doesn't seem fair, the same sort of traffic. Um, so we have some potential solutions. Uh, there's amendments that would allow for planning board and our planning staff to consider appropriately located or streamed areas for fleet vehicle parking. And then we could redefine outdoor storage in a way that makes an allowance for in-service vehicles. And we could also look at performance standards. So this is a definition change that we proposed. And this would allow the vehicles um, to stay, to be taken out of outdoor storage, if you will. So, the keeping in an unroofed area of any goods, materials, merchandise, or unregistered, uninspected. So that means you are really legitimately storing a, a, a vehicle that you don't use. Um, so that takes out the drivable vehicle, the registered vehicle. And then the term outdoor storage does not include service vehicles used by a commercial enterprise in the conduct of their business, which can meet the performance standards in section uh, 9A. So that's the first part is we would have to change the definitions to take them out. And then the performance standards, and this is what we talked about um, a couple months ago, 
is that we would add um, a provision so you could have a certain number of vehicles start. And we picked a, I think at our first number, we had a question mark about the number of parking and then the number four came up as an opportunity. Uh, so in any commercial district, parking or storage, any more than magic number, right now it's four, uh, commercial vehicle or fleet vehicles in service for permitted use must be approved by the planning board and should be in an area to the rear side of the building that's not readily seen from the street. So this would allow you, if you had a small company and you had four um, vehicles, you could park them and over the weekend, if they stayed in the front parking lot, that would be right. You get five, if this is the number that gets recommended and approved, you would have to go back to the planning board and figure out some screening opportunities. So you would locate them to the side or the rear of the structure. So this is what we're looking for some input on. Um, and then add a time period for compliance. This happens with your, <clears throat> excuse me, your existing um, businesses and structures. You know, they wanna maybe get a CO to move in and oh, okay, well, we've got to figure out a way to do it. So we have to figure out a way to add you have to achieve this in six months. You have to go to the planning board. If you have 10 fleet vehicles, that sort of thing. So that's um, what we're proposing. And then um, from you all, we would just need some input on if this sounds reasonable and we would take it to the ordinance committee for further review and then on to town council. And I'll let Brian jump in, of course, went through the whole thing, but if you have any specific, you know, Examples or anything you want to talk about, I think that would be helpful. Yeah, um, it, it was asked a little earlier, that, you know, whether this is a, a, a thing that we run into a lot. It's not something we run into a lot. I think the potential for it might be something that we run into a lot is there. And Ms. Adams said it's an opportunity to clean that up and just you know, get that codified so that there's some planning board oversight as to how many vehicles and where they're parked. But that it's not just flat, flat <laughs> prohibited. In that way, when I'm talking to businesses who are looking at a particular location and their business model or their, their business type seems to fit as a permitted use, but I'm not aware that they have several vehicles for, for service uh, for their type of business. Um, they, they may forget to mention that to me. I don't have to worry so much about bringing that up as, as a is that a question? Or maybe their business model changes and they, they add service as part of it. So this kind of helps businesses that otherwise would be perfectly um, able to, to um, exist or locate in this particular zone, kind of takes that off the table. I, I don't really know the history of why that was in there, the way it was, but you know, I can guess, we can all guess, but I think the time is right for us to say, is that really something we can prohibit? Or is it something we want to allow with standards? This is a good opportunity. I wasn't aware that you'd come up with the magic number of four, so I think that's, <laughs> that's, uh, I think I, I have a problem with that. I, I think, think that's very Peter good. suggested that at our meeting yeah. before. And Brian, I think the latest uh, example of this and what finally, you know, because we've been talking about cleaning this up for a while, um, but we ran across a, an issue, um, you know, over where in the Walgreens. Uh, Oak Hill Plaza, Oak Hill Plaza, and um, you know, as if it was a place working with the owner of the property, he's basically saying, "Listen, I have an alley that I could screen, and they could park there, and but it's not covered." And so that's another, you know, that's the latest example of this, where he would certainly be willing to go back to the um, planning board and show how it would be screened and you know, not, not detracting from the um, um, look of the, the um, shopping plaza, but the ordinance didn't allow us to do that. Is that the one right behind McDonald's with the mosquito control? Yeah, 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 yeah. And Autumn, when you said it's complaint driven, what, what's an example of the complaint that you would mm. receive? Well, in one case, residential neighbor uh, complained that fleet vehicles were parked on the road and just parked in general in parking spots. And, and, and you know, again, I I wouldn't normally go looking for these things. It's it's pretty pretty innocuous otherwise, but 
that was a she felt was a determined to her residential the residential character of their neighborhood they, the zones abutted so there was a residential zone behind this is, is it just one complaint oh i've had two so oh, you mean in that particular instance in general no, I, is it the only one place and only one no. complainer no. no, I mean, I've had complaints on other, other the latest one was, I'm and just I, giving you an And example. I think if we, if we stayed, you know, in town on Saturday and Sunday, we could go find them all too, right? We Because you can't keep them there at all right now. So, so it's really talking about the detracting from character, as you said, appearance, the quality of a residential neighborhood yeah i i think that so for the complainants but what we're trying to find is that middle ground so sure. hey you're running a small business you need a couple you have two trucks to run a plumbing company you park them on the weekend you sh you're in violation right now yeah right. no i i and, get the but so that's and what that the commercial zone and that's well. in the commercial zones and so um but then if there's too many i don't think the particular one he's talking about i don't think they would meet this i think they'd still have to go back and get plenty books i think they exceed yeah. the number yeah. uh but we're trying to find a, a middle ground where we say you can do you can do three you can do five whatever that number is um to give some because we allow the use yeah. so the use, part of the running the use is having the vehicle the burning question yeah. is, is is keeping a vehicle a fleet vehicle that's serviceable that's registered and inspected mm -hmm on your business property over the weekend, is that something the town does not want to see? Right. Is that reasonable to not allow it? And, it? and I think that's the question. If you folks decided, yeah, we don't want to allow that, then things stay you know, as they are, but that this problem will, will mm -hmm. come up again and again. Robin? Yes, I have some process questions, I guess. Um, does the number four, uh, well, first of all, uh, what businesses were consulted regarding the language proposed by Cedric? Well, this language was proposed no, this by language, planning. This language not oh, okay. I, we're, I we're, we're certainly involved yeah. because Brian and I have worked through this a lot with different companies. Okay, but. so planning has suggested this. Has mm -hmm. there been any, any outreach to businesses? Other than talking to um, um, uh, Steve Burke, who okay. owns the... Um, uh, okay. Oak Hill Plaza. We've talked with Steve. We didn't go over all the details, but the the issue um, we've talked through it with him and talked through what would be reasonable on his part, you know, in terms of screening and trying to find um, some reasonably reasonable approach to doing that. Has and, anyone else been contacted? No, we haven't contacted anyone else. I think it's just been. Um, we'll go through. Yeah. Also, right? so, oh yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, but this affects businesses. Right. So, so we need to can't do anything. Right. In a positive way, they they right. can't do anything. They are right. in violation if they park their vehicles right now in a parking lot. So we oh, haven't okay. it's Thank backwards. You. We're trying to help, okay. right? Okay. Good. <laughs> I know. Okay. So we have to not this this We're trying to get an idea. Okay. Do we want to help? And yeah. then what's that number? And then that'll go through ordinance committee. So no, this is a positive thing for the Good. business. So yeah. I, I still feel like business outreach is needed to test the number four. To see I if the number four that. is yes. appropriate or if it needs to be higher or lower. Um, or the other process question I have I is and also with can I finish? Can I finish? The other question I have is if someone if a business wants to be greater than four, are the performance standards going to be given in, in this? Otherwise, are we overburdening ZBA? Uh, well, so the planning, planning board would see planning it. Board. Yeah. it also goes to board. See Are we overburdening the, planning board? I don't, I don't think. I, I, I don't think you're going to see a planning no, board I, I, come in. Uh, it's uh, just, usually, if it's a brand new building, we have the ability to work with them from the get-go mm -hmm. in terms of parking. But we also are constrained by the um, by the ordinances. We don't have really the ability to waiver. So. We had a, a, an HVAC system along Route 1 uh, where we finally came up with a way that everything could be screened, um, but uh, that also did include uh, moving one of the trucks into the garage or having to move one of the trucks into the garage. So, so it worked, but we didn't have, as a planning board, real flexibility. This gives us 
the ability to work with a, a business uh, to make sure that they have the right screening. Um, I mean, right now we can't do anything with them. That's really. good for new businesses, but does, does well, do, they, do the existing businesses go back to planning board? They, they do not, they don't, because the planning board doesn't have any authority to waive. Right, so that's what I'm saying is, yeah. are, have existing business, what's the route for existing businesses? Right, currently, yeah. if an existing business parks their uh, vehicle in their parking lot, any vehicle, one vehicle, overnight, on the weekend, Brian can technically send them a violation right. letter. We don't do that. That's um, So but what, what happens is when we get a complaint or we're made aware of it and children anywhere, we look at it, we're like, oh, this is a problem. You can't technically do this. We got to work with you to figure out a way to put these vehicles somewhere else. Um, and so this, what we're trying to create is a process for us to say to the resident, okay, well, they can technically, they can park four vehicles over there over the weekend if they have more than that then they need we'll contact them and reach out and we'll go through a process for them to go to planning board and figure out a way to screen them or it could go through a line of review yeah or a staff, exactly. or a staff review a minor review come through our office. yeah i'm just trying to be mindful of existing businesses i guess and and understand what their needs might be right. um because the oak hill exam the oak hill sort of scenario sounds much different than mm -hmm. the the example complaint Mm -hmm. that was brought up so it sounds like we have a couple of very sort of distinct scenarios and I, I just feel like business outreach is needed I, I would think Rachel that working with staff you might be able to handle it as an administrative approval yeah, yeah. I mean right staff usually calls the chair of the planning board yeah um, does this work? And then uh, when they've done that occasionally, I've said, you know, I think this is something the planning board probably needs to see because yeah. of X, Y, and Z. Um, most of the times I say, take it. Yeah. You know, it's it's really a, a staff level, a staff level issue. Okay. So Robert, I just want I want to make sure I'm mm -hmm. um, understanding. So so just technically, any business right now. Mm -hmm. They're, if they've got a vehicle there, they're in violation. Oh, oh, over 24 hours. Over they're in violation. Yeah. So, so over the weekend, for, yeah, for example. Correct. Okay, they're in violation if they're correct. You don't send it home with their staff. Mm -hmm. yes. Okay. Yes, which yes. is what we we talked about suggested yep. that folks. It's like, can you send it home with somebody yeah. on Sunday? Because that would help, that would get you past the ordinance. Right. Um, and that's just not always feasible for them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, so, so I think <laughs> the funny side effect is that. That is, then you're in the neighborhood. Then you're not in the neighborhood. Yeah. That's probably somebody else's town, right? We pushed it out to other towns by sending it home with people. Um, so, technically, if people are in conformance, no existing businesses um, uh, are not burdened at this point because they haven't been able to do this. So, this should add relief as business turns over in existing spaces. Does that make sense? I totally I agree. just don't like the idea of just letting it sit there without noticing, like doing some outreach to the existing Oh, businesses. no, no, I totally agree. Okay, totally. so we're all in agreement that yeah. outreach to existing sure. businesses. We will send, we can send this out to, to needs folks. to be done. Yeah, and I think that's a great part of the ordinance committee yeah. review. Like if you all like, okay, this the idea is good. The number may be tweaked. That's why it's yeah. highlighted in blue. <laughs> um, can but, I be on a chamber of commerce okay. agenda? Um, yes, it certainly can. Certainly can. I mean, how else yeah. do you get a big? Well, we would send it out to businesses. our business. We we have an email distribution list, and we would we could send this out to them, and we can you know also highlight when the ordinance committee should we hold a meeting it. before this goes into effect. And well, it won't go into effect for several. I think yeah, I think that's a great idea to get yeah. that, and I think you're sure. a great resource to get yeah. that before we move it on, and so ordinance committee could have that feedback. I just, what I'm afraid of is mm -hmm. this goes into place, and then the business community goes sure. up in arms, and then it's Scarborough is business unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, this, this is, is business, business friendly. Yeah. 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 Like 
even from your perspective, at first you're thinking, oh, this is bad for business, but it's really good. So yeah. let's get in front of it yeah. so we can yeah, toot exactly. our own horns, if you will. We haven't been enforcing this. Sure. This is the great well, news. Can you work out with that? Um, don't think no, that. No, we never say that. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's a great idea. And I think yeah. if we could get Absolutely. the feedback from your group and move it that way, yeah. that might be an appropriate. Yeah. So then along the process then too, what's the process after we sort of give, I know you put it up on the screen there mm -hmm. Autumn, about the, the next steps, mm -hmm. but could you take us through potential ratification by the council? Sure. Or adoption so, by the council, um, sorry. The ordinance committee would be the next step and mm -hmm. it, they would schedule it and it may not be right away. There's some things in front of this for sure. It could stay one to two to three times depending on uh, how that goes. And then once ordinance committee is comfortable with it, they move it on to town council. So it goes to town council um, and then they hold the public hearing and they, or they hold the first, first reading, reading, then they it goes to planning board for a public hearing. And then it goes back to town council for their public hearing. Um, so it's a, it's a good lengthy process. And, um, and I would recommend too, in the outreach to businesses that they be aware of that process well, for sure. and those opportunities for public hearing for them to step up and, and yes. engage with That's the counselors certainly. directly on this. Yeah. Okay, Because yeah. so you guys all see what I was trying to say. Yeah, yeah. If we just push this through without outreach to businesses, sure. there could be a potential backlash. No, I think that's a great idea. And it uh, okay. brings to light um, some things we're trying to do in planning staff too to put some more um, information yes. on our planning page and website. So that's a good, you know, yeah. it'd be a great spot for that. Um, Can so, I comment on this? Sure. Oh. Look, I'm all for public notice on everything, but this committee does not customarily take the lead in providing notice to the public of these sorts of potential zoning changes. That's what the council does when it puts things on its agenda, gives the public notice, it can come to the council meetings and comment, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess I'm a little concerned about setting a precedent here. I'm not asking us to do that. Can, can I finish what I'm sure? Yeah. yeah. As you won't pass it, but you finish. I, I don't think it's a good idea for us to start a process where we're giving notice to the public of things we're doing. Oh. When, it, when it's, it, that's what the council does. Mm -hmm. If we if we decide, well, this one should go to people ahead of council to action on it. Does that mean we can start doing that with every single proposed zoning change? So procedurally, I don't agree with this. Well, I don't think that Robin or even no, I are no. wanting to add a new yeah. procedure. I think she's just making a recommendation that we really touch base with the business owners Thank before you. we move it along. I don't think it has anything to do with long range planning committee. I don't want to yeah. mix words. Well, but so if we if we propose some change to marijuana zoning mm -hmm. do we now contact all the marijuana businesses in town and let them know in advance that we're making a change mm -hmm. well you, long range planning committee doesn't make any changes so you don't actually enact any i know that but, we're, but not, I don't, we're also not in charge with the responsibility sure. here of bringing the public up to speed on things that's what the you're council you're does. not and and our staff and council and ordinance committee that's theirs but i think what she's just asking for is a recommendation that hey we like what's staff has put together, we'd really like to make sure that we have a public outreach process and that could be established X, Y, Z. Have a great day. That's all I'm hearing, really. Yeah, I mean, and to really clarify, I don't mean notice in a legal sense right. that he might be saying. I'm just saying, letting them be aware of this, sure. that this is coming and here are your opportunities to respond and be yeah. engaged. I, I know, so I think we're okay, Rick. I mean, I see your point. I definitely don't want to start adding. Yeah, this and this not... committee doesn't have that authority to start noticing people. But yeah, I think it's just. Like, I think the sensitivity yeah. maybe the the four is that a good is that a good number and that's right right that's a really set code we would certainly reach out and say hey we're thinking you know long range is thinking about this what do people you know what okay. what do people think so m m very informal in that right. yes. as long as it's not no. starting a process that no formally no. notified no that's not what I'm in public about. Yeah. Proposed changes that it's we're not implied recommending to a ahead of the normal process. So, process. Yeah, yeah, I, I see this more in terms of remember when um, we were doing long range planning committee was doing the the recommended changes to um, in implementation of the 2006 plan. Right. We often did some neighborhood meetings just to test things out, and 
Well, we may not be doing a meeting, but I see the sort of a general question out to the community as, as similar to that. What I heard okay. is that we're recommending to the ordinance committee that they consider Robin's suggestion, basically. Mm -hmm. right. And the, okay. the ordinance, and we'll move it forward and now tell us what they like. Right. So a great example, um, to, to Rod Road, you all made a recommendation, let's move it to ordinance committee uh, for no through truck posting. And then at ordinance committee, um, they asked us to do a traffic study, a speed study, and to notice some, do some other things. And so that's how that process works. And like that one's not completed yet. It's still an ordinance committee. It's still in that process. So this is just a recommendation. I think take Martin there and sort. So just a couple of comments on uh -huh. the change sure. before the Go ahead. Um, and I'm looking at your memos, and I can't read that as well, but just a minor language change in the definition of outdoor storage. Instead of saying service vehicles used in a commercial enterprise in the conduct of their business, I wonder if there should be its. Okay. Will, will you tell me where you are? Well, I'm time. looking at the memo. Right. God, and, uh, paid one of the memo. Yeah, and in the an ultimate sentence. So the uh, English speaker said it's yes. Okay, I perfect. think it should say yes. Words for me. And the other thing, more of a maybe this is for it's client. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the because otherwise there would be construed to be referring to the service vehicles rather than to, uh, also the out outdoor storage refers to service vehicles. Then, and again, I'm looking at the definition in mm -hmm. the memo, but I think it's similar. But I can say, but then in the in the section nine uh, a uh, to fourteen, there's reference to commercial motor vehicles, oh, commercial goodness. motor vehicles, yeah, commercial vehicles, commercial vehicle or fleet of vehicles, fleet vehicles. There's an inconsistency, okay. and maybe it's not an inconsistency. But are we talking about the same thing? The same thing. We yeah. talk about service vehicles. So service should be commercial. Well, I, I haven't yeah. as fully, as as fully as vetted this, but I'm in just section. But yeah, you're we right. ought to be consistent in, okay. in talking about service vehicles. Let's say service vehicles, okay. yeah. or, or let's call but, them commercial vehicles or whatever. But I we'll pick something so they. But there's an inconsistent. The, the commercial probably is the better term because service some people may construe as sure. You're actually, you know, it's a vehicle used to provide like, a service. Like a van with parts mm -hmm. put yeah. in it as opposed and, to simply right. a car that anything. anything. Right. right. And right. it could be an installation vehicle, which is totally different yeah. than right. a service vehicle. I'm just worried that we don't want to allow quote a service vehicle, but not somebody who's got a, a sedan with a little magnet, yeah. you know. Um, right. Little, that's a good, a that's a it. fair point. I, I, I think it needs to kind of be all inclusive of anything that's operated. As a part of that business enterprise, right. as opposed to somebody storing their boat behind your business. <laughs> I don't see a definition in the ordinance at all for vehicles or commercial vehicles. There's no definition. So Com commercial vehicles are licensed as commercial, in my understanding. I mean, I have a vehicle that's licensed commercial. Is it, but does it have a, a logo on it or a label? No, but it's and a I commercial. I think that's vehicle. how. It's the visible by state definition. Yeah. Well, all I'm saying is that the need consistency is yeah. used. Yeah, I, I agree. We just need to clean, clean it up and yeah. make everything connect. I don't know that we do. We, do you feel that we need to actually have a definition for commercial vehicle in the ordinance, or can we put it in outdoor storage and say these types of vehicles? Is that enough? No, don't we don't have a definition for commercial vehicle. I don't. We don't have a. We can. I don't see one, period. Yeah. Well, it could be somewhere other. Than that. I mean, you know, it's... It, it, For consistency, uh, we could add the definition, and so it all lines up. So I think those are good points. I'm not sure you need to necessarily have a definition in and of itself in the ordinance. Right. I thought somewhere... As long as it's defined. Mm -hmm. in the oh, okay. I thought the reference was any visible sign or logo on a vehicle is that somewhere okay that's how i i'd always interpret it yeah, i don't think i don't think so it's very it's very open to uh, mm. 
interpretation as to what you're going to consider the commercial vehicle. For example, you might have a pickup truck with no markings on it whatsoever. It's a Ford F-250 and it's registered as commercial. Do I consider if you have if you both if both you and your wife drive F-250s with commercial plates on it? Am I considering those two commercial vehicles? No, because there's no I have no way of knowing if you're using them for anything other than your own use. You could have a license plate that has that, the that's what I'm company. saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. but but I I think yeah, I think it has to be readily identifiable as a vehicle used in service of that business enterprise. And you've never gone so far as to have to try to enforce this and then have that enforcement action challenge. Um, it hasn't. It hasn't been challenged. It's, it's been challenging, but it hasn't been challenged. Yeah. Wasn't that the um, the reason why Mercedes Benz came to a contact zone years ago because it was. A, well, all the car cars. You're exactly right. All the car dealerships. This is the main reason why right. the contract is on. Yeah, car dealerships the not in the allowed use at all. Yep. Right. Yeah. Outside. Well, if they had a big. It building, technically is in what's up, but we said we put them all inside. The standards that no business could happen. And there was a rationale at the time, but we didn't want to fill up. Probably, I think, anyways, we didn't want to fill up with one car dealerships. Right. Right. Sure. Um, and I think that probably still holds holds true today. Mm -hmm. um, so I, 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 one of the things that's counsel I'd be looking for from this group is, you know, the original intent, probably where we are today, or, or I'd like to understand where you guys are, but uh, and is this consistent with the original intent? And I, I think it is. Well, that would, and that would be a distinction because car dealers have vehicles parked for sale. They're not really in service of that enterprise. It's product, really. Yeah. It's product, right? So maybe we need to clarify that as well. I don't, know, I don't well, want to. I don't want to have an unintended consequence right. all of a sudden having car dealerships come. Because we do have a separate definition for outdoor sales. Right. And outdoor that's right. That's yeah. yeah. So this so wouldn't affect that. I don't think so. Sure. That's a great point. We should explore that a little bit at staff level to make sure we get that. You, you might start in, in the definition of outdoor storage to strike the service. So you're talking about do not include vehicles. Right. Used in the blah blah blah. There's your definition. Well, get rid of the word then word. you go to this section and make corresponding changes so that you don't talk about so there's consistency in the mm -hmm. reference to the type of vehicles we're talking about. That's listening to the conversation, it strikes me that maybe it's not ready to go to ordinance. Maybe our recommendation is to send it back to staff or to. I don't mean to make more work for people. I'm just, no, I mean, you think that we need to get it right. We right. need to get it quick. We need to get it right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I'm being a lawyer, right? Now. No, that's so great. That's, that's why you all are here. But I just, you focus on things like that. And mm -hmm. there ought to be consistency in the use of a definition, particularly when there is no definition in and of itself. Mm -hmm. Well, I love the fact that coming from your perspective, you're looking for those flaws mm -hmm. because that's, right. what, that's what we need to make sure aren't there. Otherwise, well, otherwise somebody comes in and says, well, gee, is a service vehicle? Right. It says commercial. Exactly. exactly. This is not a big ticket on a no. town attorney, but right. to no. review briefly. Right. And I think that right. review. Right. Like, right. Yeah, we can definitely bring it back. Yeah. It's fine. Yeah. And we want this to be small business friendly. And mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, that's really what we're talking about. Yeah, and if that, if that could be the message to you coming away from today, that really we're, we're trying to be small business friendly. And for me, my comments were meant to sort of not short circuit this and just push it through without the feedback and also give our code enforcement officers the, the tools they need to um, be consistent in the field. So thank you for understanding. Sure. I only have, well, I, I have a question and a comment. Have we vetted the industrial zone to make sure that the verbiage that we have there is not in conflict with what we're talking about doing in the business zones? Good point. Mm, I don't think. Well, I, I think we say commercial districts. I don't think industrial is considered commercial. Industrial That's why I'm asking the question. Yeah. yeah. I also think it's not. I think outdoor storage 
is left. It's a permitted it's, use. It's a permitted okay. use. So it wasn't an issue in the industrial zone. All right, I just we'll yeah. double check. want to make sure that we yeah. looked at it. That's, That's why we never that. came across it in, in industrial, because it was actually a lab. And my question to you, Brian, is when something comes up like this, is there a form or anything that people have to fill out when they come to see you if they have questions or um, or even if it's becoming an established new business, is there a form that gets filled out regarding uh, outside storage or anything of that nature? Because I'm wondering, the only reason why I'm asking is if this is potentially a problem, is there something we can put in the application that addresses the item? Because you said you've never heard, but you don't know when somebody comes in front of you what the usage is. So I'm just wondering, is there a form and an application process that we can add a line to that addresses the issue? Well, yeah, that's a great question. And to Rachel's point, when it's a new establishment, it obviously gets handled through the site review process. What I'm talking about are, are the situation like Oakville, where it's staffed, it's, it's, a, right. it's an existing building, new tenant moves in. Oftentimes I'll get a call and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to move into this space. I have a retail business. Retail who's allowed in that. Yeah. They don't necessarily give me a lot of information. I try to do a little bit of conversation, kind of make sure I understand. But I mean, they they may just forget that. Oh yeah, I, I intend to have four vehicles or yeah. whatever. But they do need a CO. They need yeah. a CO. That's so to your point. Yeah. Maybe we there's no form. There's, there's no form. Yeah. There's a conversation at that. Okay. Okay. And unless they say, "I have a retail a business and I want outdoor storage," which requires a special exception review by the zoning board, I can inform them of that. So there, now there's another process forms yeah. plans that. Or if they do a site plan amendment to accommodate their new business in that spot, then it goes to planning board. So it gets handled in those. But I'm just talking about simple tenant um, yeah. turnover. <laughs> and, and to your point, I think that's a great point to, that we can if we can yeah. capture it up front. And there's probably some other things we'd like to know too. Yeah, I mean maybe yeah. somewhere, so, even if it's a um, even if it's a piece of paper that you use that has your principal questions on it. Mm -hmm. Maybe that gets added so that you don't miss it. So you and then it goes back on somebody. Yeah, yeah. and the applicants right. acknowledging that they entered it, they yes or no, and so great we have yeah. yeah, that's a great idea, actually. Right. Any other discussion? Great work by the staff. Thanks. All right. So the anticipation then is that staff's going to work on the. Mm -hmm. Revise some of the language. Is it going to come back in front of us before yes, we recommend back, to uh, ordinance? Okay. That sounds great. All right. Uh, so, next item that I see is discuss and provide input on the commercial design standards comprehensive plan implementation. Autumn? And I'm just going to warn you all this is take a big breath, right? <laughs> so, um, Every time I look at this, I change how I want to think about it. And I'm just going to go through it with you. And we're not moving this forward anywhere, anytime soon. So just know that. And we're just getting started. Okay. <laughs> so we, uh, when we had a meeting a few months ago, we talked about the different items that fed into the task that we, the top six tasks that the board committee um, moved up to the top. And so we decided to go with commercial design. This task first, uh, encourage attractive mixed use centers in order to attract new businesses. So this is a task from the comprehensive plan and implementation plan. And so when we looked at that last time, these are the items that staff identified get you there, right? So attractive mixed use centers, that, that means a lot of things have to happen. Um, uh, and commercial design standards was first, and it was the one we decided we would do first. I don't know if we're gluttons for punishment or we just wanted to have some fun in 2023, but that's what we're going to do. <laughs> that sense. But I'm excited about it, but it is it is going to be a process. We're following your lead. We are, and I'm, I'm there. 
because I sold my house and I'm energetic. <laughs> You're really here. I'm really energetic, yes. And so the existing standards that we have right now, we have uh, commercial design standards that were adopted in 2001, and then they were amended in 2009. They are, they've been around for a while, but their intent was really there. And so from a planning perspective, there's some great intent in there and there's some great items. Um, they're They're very, wordy a bit and um, sometimes not so clear, but that's what we have. We also have um, site plan ordinance that has some extra things in it um, and some references back and forth. And then we have the zoning ordinance, which includes signs and parking, um, and those things are all interchanged. So it's a, it's a web of information to go through. But right now, this is applicability. So this is how these commercial design standards apply to new <laughs> buildings. They go through the planning board for site plan. So we have the site plan review ordinance, and that's chapter 405B. And it includes a reference to the commercial design standards for large retail buildings, linear commercial buildings, national franchises, and service stations. And then we have another part that refers to the commercial to the commercial uh, districts for specific zoning districts. So RPO, B1, TVC, B2, HP, and TND for commercial things. So we have a couple of different things getting you to these commercial design standards. Um, and then we have the applicability. I like to look at things by structure. Um, because zoning ordinances can change and districts can change, but the types of structure, this is what we have right now. We don't have any existing standards for single family other than building code. We have all building code requirements, but we don't have anything special, materials, roof pitch, anything like that, other than in the TND. Um, single family detached, we don't have any multifamily structures, not specifically called out. Some things sort of treat them as commercial and some things they're really not commercial. So they're, it's not specific. Mixed use structures, again, it's not specific. And then non-residential structures, again, like I said, it varies based on the type and the zoning. And so we have some um, requirements for commercial, large scale retail, which we define over 20,000, and then industrial. And then we have some things for tech buildings too. So proposed changes just from the get-go. We I want us to think about this. Um, this is a rewrite of these standards. And so um, I'd like to put the design standards into the site plan ordinance and feed those in so it all fits in. And then where we have um, references to zoning ordinance chapters very succinctly and cleanly refer to this chapter for signs, this chapter for parking. And I think it will make it a lot easier for us to know what's required. Um, great example, the site plan ordinance refers you to commercial design standards. Commercial design standards say you have to do a sign master plan, but that's not in the sign ordinance. So it's, it's tricky. Um, if you think parking commercial vehicles overnight is tricky, this is tricky. <laughs> Um, this, this one is, is confusing. So my purpose with this, just giving you some out um, some background and kind of this is how I'm thinking about structuring it. And the way I work um, when I'm looking at ordinance changes is I work, and I won't give this to you because it's even long, it's sort of like a table of contents sort of thing. So I go through everything that we have in all these places, put them together, put them in an order that makes sense, and then I'll combine all of the text, all of the words that we have, and then look at the duplications, the inconsistencies, the things that don't make sense, um, the extras, and sort of pare it down. And so that's all staff work. So you don't have to worry about that. But what I'm wanting from this group is the specifics, like a great example, root pitch. Do you want a 512 or a 612, or do you care? So that's what I'm looking for uh, as we go through this, those specific inputs to what you want the town to look like. So I wanna, I wanna take you out of the framework because it's, it's hard even for me, just I've 
thought about it several different ways, but I'm really looking for specific uh, input from you guys. And then once we get that, we'll, I'll put it into this format and then we'll start talking about the, the ordinance. Does that sound like a plan? <laughs> So, okay, <laughs> just I just wanted you to know. Don't worry about all the words you're gonna see because it's there's they can be scary. Um, so I just want to talk about the specifics. And so for this meeting, we're just gonna focus on architectural principles. And again, my goal is not to get through these. I just want to give you some really get you familiar. I don't know if you've all read the commercial design standards that I sent out. Um, there's several that I know you. You have it under your pillow at night. It's a page turner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, there are several sections, and I thought we would go with architectural because it's really for commercial design standards. This seems to be the top one. If, if I could just interrupt, uh, this is in a very timely discussion because on the agenda for the planning board on Monday is the conceptual or preliminary sketch plan for the town center at the Downs, mm -hmm. uh, moving into the mixed use residential commercial uh, and all the rest. So it's going to be, it's really going to come in handy to have this sort of a, a discussion because that's going to start to move fast. I, more of a, for what it's worth, I think, Rick, were you not on the committee that originally developed these? I was going to address that, but you go ahead. Yeah, well, I, I knew that. I knew it because it happened just before I started to get involved. Were you there, Karen, on that? Or, uh, sorry. <laughs> Rick, you're the only one that has the background, so I would believe, just as a, for what it's worth. I think the prime mover of this was our good and late friend, Susan Arnold. Yep. She was on the board with me at the time. And we were finding that people would come and say, you know, we want to make a building paint or something. Mm -hmm. Susan. Susan was always concerned about things like that. And so she suggested, and I don't recall the specifics of how we went from her suggestion to these standards, but basically she drove the process by which we came up with these standards. And quite frankly, I think they're based on some general thing mm -hmm. that somebody found somewhere. Um, was never entirely clear to me back then whether they were mandatory or, you know, guidance wise. But if you look at the second page of them, it does say that they are guidelines to assist applicants in designing a proposal which will comply with the standards of section section C of the site plan review. And so I want to talk about that in a moment. But that's the background. And I don't know how they've been applied since then but that that's how they came about we, we stuck to them pretty closely yeah, we in did. the years that i was on the board so yeah, and, 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 and really stick it. to them but but some of them are so fuzzy yeah right. I, I, new england architecture i constantly england architecture. I, and you know yeah. tell people to tell me what new england vernacular is yes, yes. but it was they were intended to give to amplify mm -hmm. our desires for what things would look like so that's the background. The other thing I just noticed, I'm if you look at that paragraph on the base page on the second page of the guidelines, it refers to section C of the site plan review. And it's well, there is no that section doesn't C. exist, right? There but is a section, what is it? Something there is L. I told you, Rick, I warned you. It's and too painful. <laughs> that's, that's been amended right. as of last year, I 21. Um, so that needs to be addressed. Yeah, well, but in any event, yes. that's the background. Yes. And you know, no, and, and to, for 2001 and 2009, those the intent is good and the, the little pieces are good. I just want to, uh, and that's what I want your input on. You know, I think there's some things, the commercial design center, some things are required. And so that's the, do we want to require or do we want to suggest? You know, that's part of this discussion too. Um, but yeah, the framework is definitely going to be cleaned up and I easier to understand. The beauty is it's a site plan ordinance mm -hmm. provision. Mm -hmm. We can pretty much do whatever we want mm -hmm. because site plan is entirely local. It's not mandated yeah. in the state mm -hmm. law as opposed to the subdivision. So we have a lot of Some flexibility. But to Robin's point, I think we want to be careful not to be so rigid that we start upsetting. 
Sure. Yeah, make it too complicated. Sure. The other nuance here mm -hmm. is that I, this isn't really an ordinance. It was adopted by the planning. It's a planning board policy. Right. So mm -hmm. I don't know if it would be enforceable. And that when I, because the planning board is supposed to make decisions based on mm -hmm. does something comply with the ordinance. Um, so it's kind of circular. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like the approach. And I, this one's been on my list. It's uh, it's a risk area. But the, the ordinance, site plan ordinance now mandates compliance. Right. It's a win. It says yes. shall, <laughs> shall comply with the more specific. Yeah. Design standards for the Garbo's commercial district. So, for better or worse, it does appear to be now mandatory. In the it's sense that under it, our ordinance on our website. So, yeah. so and, it appears and to clear it on that, yeah. it, it <laughs> sounds know. like that you all are on board with putting it into the site plan ordinance. That, that, that framework, pulling it all in, and it yeah. has to be caught. It's adopted. Right. The goal is to have this adopted by council. Yeah. Right. That's it my is, ultimate. Yeah. yeah, it'll get put in. We'll open up Chapter 405B. We'll put these things in. It'll go through a lengthy process. Yeah. Yeah. Starting here and then so on, and I'll just keep going. Um, and it accomplishes two things. Yeah. One clarifies and talks about any changes or things we want to do mm -hmm. from an architectural uh, standard perspective, but it also achieves or starts achieving the goal of simplifying mm -hmm. the zoning ordinance, making mm -hmm. it easier for people um, to talk to. Because I, I think just you guys probably know this, but I think all all of us staff in the room deal with people every day going i don't understand like because if you're trying to do something you're going to be going to the zoning ordinance and you may get five of the ten places where something is referenced and it's just you know it's complicated so anything we do to simplify is a step toward business and residential friendly so if you can understand it, it's good. Okay, so that's that's our intent. We're trying to make it easier. Um, and job security, you know, because I'm right. in my house. <laughs> um, so what I have in this presentation is just basically what's in, in the existing commercial design standards. And we don't have to go through it all, but it does, it, it has some very lengthy goals and some objectives. And I think, um, they're all still on point, but I think they're all covered really perhaps by our comprehensive plan. And I just want you all to, as you go through these, say, ooh, that's a that's a weird goal. We don't really want that anymore. Or that's not where we're coming from. These goals won't be part of the commercial design standards in the future. These are just sort of the guiding principles for that document. And so um, the design standards will be more specific, but these are just things for you to, to understand where they were coming from and what they were trying to achieve, which I think was a, definitely a positive for that time period. I think that was a really positive step because you don't see that a lot um, back then. So um, the general objective of the commercial design standards we have right now was to encourage architecture within the commercial districts that draw its in, and I apologize for any uh, weird typos. This is a PDF to Word, and I did not go back and read every word that saw its draw, its inspiration from traditional New England examples. So that goes back to that planning board. What is a New England example? Uh, building design shall reinforce a human scaled environment through careful consideration of architectural forms, mapping, detailing, numbering, use of materials, and color. Um, so I think all those things, those objectives are still appropriate. It's just about us defining what massing and what scale and what we want that to look like now in today's terms. And then materials, you know, some material changes have definitely occurred in the last 20 years and architectural styles have changed. And what is our comfortable bill? I'm going to say this word every meeting. It's not a word. Uh, what is our level of comfort? Um, with materials now. These standards say no metal, are we comfortable with metal and this sort of application, that kind of thing. Um, again, just more details and licensed architect and all about the human scale. Facade design, so the facade, the front of the structure. And as we go through these two, keep in mind, 
these will vary if it's a commercial building or if it's an industrial building, right? So I, there's no intention from our perspective to make those meet unless we hear otherwise. I don't think an industrial building in an appropriately zoned industrial district should meet the same requirements as a retail establishment in a Route One high, you know, high impact area if it's zoned for that. So facades right now, and these are good. These things, um, these are good options. There's some treatments that are in there that you have to have three or more of these things. And so what you don't get is this flat box. And I think um, I think these are still good and appropriate. Um, so I plan to use uh, to keep this sort of item in, in the design standards for facade treatment. This one also has uh, a 40% transparency requirement. So you have to have 40% windows, doors, openings. I think that's good as well. Um, so I think this is actually a good standard and we'll just rework it in unless you all think, you know, three or more is not appropriate. If it sounds good, is a good starting point. I'm comfortable with that. Again, I know this is the whole lot. Um, and I just want to introduce you this next time. I'll break these things down into that specific requirements. That'll be a little easier, I think, to, to internalize. I, and, I don't know if it falls in a different place, but there was also a requirement that no wall could be more than 100 feet without some kind of a offset. breakage, offset. Yes, so we have that too. Okay. Um, <clears throat> That's a constant. That's a constant fight when somebody the developer says, "What? Well, it's only 110 feet." Yeah, and I have to say, no, no, yeah, no. That's, standard. Yeah, that's yeah. what it is. <laughs> when also part of this goal of for this for a staff level is to not make planning boards life so hard, right? So when these things come in and we review, Eric reviews, does it <laughs> yeah. meet all of these? No, no, no. Yes, yes, yes. You don't meet these. Try again. I, my goal is to not even take anything forward to Buddy Board um, unless it meets our requirements. If we want these requirements, so now if there's flexibility or you know, but if I'm used to uh, approving site plans uh, at a staff level and having very specific and having some areas where I can <clears throat> work with you. Okay, it's 105 feet. Okay, I'm going to need something extra here and here and here, and then it. Um, they, they just do it. They have the rules, you tell them, they do it. Mm -hmm. uh, it makes, I think that, I think it makes your life maybe a little less fun, but <laughs> <laughs> it might uh, make it a little more predictable. Uh, I, I know as a, as a former planning board member, that that is music to my ears. Um, mm -hmm. But as always, I have a process question, which is, um, will uh, you all be, um, Talking with uh, en uh, engineering and and public works or whoever yeah. else might sort of this might have some unintended consequences mm -hmm. on how code enforcement does their job or others. So most okay. definitely, Good. most definitely, because the architectural piece is just one piece that'll go into right. the site plan. Or there's landscaping, yes. there's sidewalks, there's street. You know, there's a whole. Yeah, it's a it's a big project. Can I um, just suggest some homework for this committee? Um, in terms of, of industrial, when we get to that, if you take a look at the Pleasant Hill industrial area, mm -hmm. take a look at the industrial area down Washington Street, um, and then take a look at the Innovation District. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that's pretty much the three different development ages of industrial um, in, in Scarborough, and you will see the dramatic difference between what was considered acceptable many years ago uh, and what, what's going up now. Uh, and what we did, what the, the Crossroads District did is we, we met and set uh, design standards and, and guidelines for a lot of stuff uh, before construction actually began. Um, and that's been very helpful because now if a building's going up, it's very clear it's got to be x y and z this has got to be the siting this is going to be the parking um 
And I think the process that's being used and the standards that are being used for the for the crossroads is actually good. Um, it is up to date. There are some areas that drive me a little batty, but that's okay. Uh, so I think we we have some modern standards already there and, and agreed to that that would be good just just to take a look at as if we start with, with some of this discussion. Frank but I, I think you'd be amazed at what you see in the innovation district. When I think of, uh, I mean, obviously, understanding to my limited degree and respect for the planning board, the zoning board of appeals, uh, as far as long range planning committee goes, specifically, uh, I think as some adoption, at least this would make me more comfortable, of a low altitude, but still from a you know, 5,000, 10,000 foot view. When you talk about New England design standards, that's where I stop. And I'm looking for a meeting. I've heard you say, tell me what that means. Tell me what that means. That seems to me to be appropriate discussion, briefly, maybe, uh, for this committee to drill down a little bit on what that means. Are we talking about 19th century village is what we want? <laughs> or New England village? Are we okay. talking about 21st century contemporary? New or, or Milltown, which I grew up in. Right. That's well, that means, you know, that's, but but right. yeah. it means many things. You know, many things. <laughs> in Scarborough. Our role the big parts means many different things in different parts of Scarborough. Okay. Yeah. So, so the other thing, I'm too, excuse me, Robin, is that depending upon where you were in town, sometimes the standards didn't apply. And mm -hmm. I'll point out one building that I'm sorry to say that I actually was on the board when it was approved, but Walgreens. All right. So the intent when we looked at that building where it was on a prominent corner, we were looking for something that was at least two stories high and a flat roof was not a problem. Mm -hmm. We weren't looking for a pitched roof at that point because the intent was as we were trying to, I'll say, create a town center back then, we envisioned a town as having brick buildings two or more stories high in a traditional downtown kind of look appealing. So we need to also maybe take a look at where these standards apply mm -hmm. and do we want to have a different standard for different areas of town as you indicated, Rachel, with what's going on with Crossroads. So I would vote for more unified standard, yeah. uh, even though Scarborough is a big place. Yeah, no, I just point out that there were some differences that we had as we were going through the processes in different areas of town. And, and so, we have the character standards, for instance, Higgins Beach. Correct. That's yes. separate. That would say, yeah. So I don't, I don't know if the New England design has a brick building, downtown brick building, <laughs> in the process of it, or, you know. When, oh, so <laughs> as someone who was born and raised in sort of mid-coast Maine, uh, New England design has a far different application than Scarborough, which was a farm town that has now been pushed into suburbia. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm just going to be frank. <laughs> okay, and when you live on Mid Coast Maine, New England design means lobstermen park their boats next to attorneys <laughs> and you live happily ever after. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this is New England vernacular design has a lot of inherent issues, okay, that I think we should recognize. Um, so I really enjoy Marvin's point that we should have a larger discussion about that. My second point is um, I really appreciate Rachel saying, let's do some homework. As a resident of Pleasant Hill area, I drive up and down the Pleasant Hill Industrial Park at least twice a day and really appreciate the granite curves, for example, that have gone in recently to try to like bring some, some boundaries mm -hmm. to what's there. And I really enjoy seeing the differences between Pleasant Hill, Washington Street, and then Innovation Crossroads different districts because it, it brings, you know, 
better ideas. But what do we do? This is my second point. I have a third point also. But what do we do about these existing areas? You know, um, that we, we you know, do we go back and make existing, you know, the development, these areas? I mean, let's, I mean, I'd like to know what the long-term sort of, you know, community development or economic development plan is for these industrial zones as things turn over so that we can, we can um, keep these improvements going here. My third point though is about the different standards throughout town with the exception of, I get it with Higgins Beach. Um, you know, I think that's gonna be something that we really need to talk about too because Scarborough is a town of, without a town center, as we know. It's just a bunch of small villages. You know, there's West Scarborough, there's Dunstan Corner, there's Oak Hill. And when I moved from Northern and Mid Coast Maine to Scarborough 25 years ago this year, um, I was really, you know, just taken aback that there's no town center, there's no town green, you know, it, it's just a bunch of small communities. So do we want to try to preserve that? You know, meaning do we want different standards throughout town? Or do we want a unified, consistent throughout town? Scarborough is what, the fastest growing in Maine? Mm -hmm. we, have, we have, a lot has happened before you got here. Mm -hmm. And all I can say is thank goodness that you're here, Autumn, so that we can move forward with, with some real intention and mindfulness, I guess is, is, is how I would put it. Because it, it seems as though everybody's doing their own thing Wherever, wherever you are, and this will be a great improvement, but I think we really need to think about existing development. So if I could just say, you know, Marvin, you brought up the New England design standards. I know Rachel mentions, it. she chuckles when she says it, I'm just gonna say it. Maybe that just, it's not, that's not our overarching principle that there's going to be this New England vernacular. Maybe this is the opportunity to say, this is going to be Scarborough's design. Standards. And this is what we want Scarborough to look like. And we don't rely on the past of what, when I think of New England architecture, I think like, you know, really close knit, little tight buildings yep. and sidewalks and colonial four squares. Yeah. And federalist homes and just cool little capes. And, you know, that's what I think. That's what I conjure up, right? But that's not appropriate really for commercial design standards. But what is appropriate to come up with uh, a materials and a form and and you don't have to have everything that looks the same too. You want to have some flexibility. I mean, it's a we live in a free market and you want to have some things, but you want to make sure that the designs, you don't just get franchise world too. Mm -hmm. And so you have some protections put in place. So I see these as that opportunity to say, we're comfortable with this and this and not that and that, right? So we're not comfortable with a flat box. We're not comfortable with out some projections, we want windows, we want some roof treatments. If you're gonna have a flat roof, we want a cornice. We want some design elements. We want you to go above and beyond, not just slap your standard have, building. Have you ever driven down Route 302 in Wyndham and what they consider their downtown? Yes, but not mindful of what I'm talking about today. <laughs> So I, I would suggest if you get an opportunity, just take an off to run down that uh -huh. road and then you'll understand why we did what I think we were doing along Route yeah. 1. We didn't want that. Oh, I totally understand. <laughs> yeah, I, no, I get well, I was a hot tub problem too, wasn't there? Yeah. But yeah, it, no, it's, it, it's kind of like, to me, that's a great idea. That's yeah. a great presentation of a lack of planning. Sure. No, I'm from Texas. Have you ever heard of a little city called Houston yeah, yeah. where there's no zoning? Yeah. There's correct. Beautiful home next to metal machine shop mm -hmm. with I mean, yeah, yeah. no. So, I I know what that looks like. So yeah. I that's why again, don't ever take any of my uh, I'm super impressed with what's already here for the size of Scarborough and what we have to work with. I'm excited as a planner. You know, when I looked at Scarborough, I was like, "Oh my god." their stuff together a little bit little tweaks here little things here it's a really good good place to be so the um, science standards to me as you were talking about the roof pitch mm -hmm. that's pretty specific mm -hmm. uh, i look to the town hall mm -hmm. the building next door brick mm -hmm. uh i mean you have 
have to start somewhere. You might as well start in the building we're sitting in and then the new building adjacent to us. People like that. Is, is, is that a starting place? It might be helpful um, to bring back for the next time to take some buildings that we all, maybe you guys can give me a list of buildings that you like in town. And I can break them down into what these are. And would that be helpful to me? I was going to suggest maybe as a thought as you develop this, mm -hmm. maybe include some photos. And mm -hmm. That's one thing I like about the commercial. Yeah, yeah. The photos are crappy, yes. but be, being able to illustrate what it is your words are supposed yes. to be, I think is yes. helpful to any designer. Yeah. They can see a big, this is an example of what this means. Mm -hmm. That's really helpful. And I don't think we use it. pictures enough. We may, we may want to take the uh, community service bus out and do a, mm -hmm. a little architectural Definitely. tour for everyone. So I think that's a really good, I mean, if there are, I love that. If there are some structures you all would like to look at and then we can kind of analyze them as a group so we understand what fenestration means, what roof pitch means, what articulation means, corners, canopies, shutters, all those great things that architects live in. And when you try to write them in a code, <laughs> it becomes this very flat thing. Like, what does that really mean? You know, all of our buildings going right. to be this undulating little thing. Do you um, promise to show us the good, the bad, and the ugly, though? I do. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I want to see the it. good, but I want to yeah. see the bad. Yeah. And yeah. even worse. Yeah. yeah, definitely do that. And and that's been my intention all along. I, I, I'm not going to lie. I've been focused on the GMO, and I struggled a little bit about how to so much information in this. Um, but I think it sounds like you all are on board with this framework moving forward and then we'll we'll tackle it. I won't even we won't even talk about all the words in the commercial design standards, but we will talk about the standards. So we will say it says right now roof pitch is this. It says right now these materials are this. And then we'll just work from there. Um, Peter sent me the funniest email I think I've read in a really long time that last five minutes about the details and what we were planning for and do we have money to to hire somebody to rewrite these I'm like we do it's me and you <laughs> I'm going to bring you all coffee and <laughs> we're going to get this done so. it also involves a map of where we're talking yeah. about mm -hmm. and that's an important I think an important sure. visual component not Right. It's a building for talking about for where are we putting districts and so Scarborough. Scarborough. Where are we talking okay. like where are the commercial areas that we're talking about developing and what do we want them to look like? Yeah, and, and I think um another question is we, we keep talking about villages uh, in town. Do we want to start to homogenize them or do we want to um, make them more distinct as a village. Mm -hmm. um, so that when we say Scarborough is composed of X number of villages, do people say, oh yeah, I and I know that where this village is, I know where that village is. Mm -hmm. Or do we want to just end up kind yeah. of homogenizing the whole of Scarborough? And that's, yeah. that's a basic question as we start to look at some of these design standards. Mm -hmm. I have a great example for that too, well, too now that I can think of. Uh, a bad example would be urban renewal. A good example would be um, Martha's Vineyard. If you've ever been on Martha's Vineyard and there's that little village, I can't remember the name of it, where gingerbread houses were actually really part of their settling on uh, the land kind of a thing. Mm -hmm. And that village has actually been sort of part of, maybe it's probably even already in the National Historic Register or whatever, but I'm seeing that that could have an appeal to bring people in. Oh, let's go look at, you know, the Higgins Beach, you know, beach community. Let's go look at this village kind of a thing. It could have an appeal. But I, I just caution us too to like, if we decide to just frost the cake and level everything, that it ends up in an urban renewal nightmare where it was gross. So what could happen with that, we could um, take this overall unified approach, right? And we define what we know uh, we we don't want. We know where we have some parameters because we're not making, with these commercial design standards, we're not going to say you shall have this sort of structure. We're giving you some flexibility. You know, roof pitches from 412 to 612. If you do a flat roof, do these things. So that's a lot of flexibility. But then once we get that established, now I'm talking long-term job security. Um, once we get that established, we go in and we do. We can look at these. 
the villages and the neighborhoods. And we nail if if that's a if that's a council direction and a comp plan and it comes down, that's a possibility. You overall you clean house a bit, you get things squared away, but then you can target these villages, if you will, for more character and more focus. If that's a desire, you could do it that way. Um, I think it would be really hard to do each one at the same time because mm -hmm. it's under it's a whole neighborhood planning process. Um, but I think that's as we go through this, you know, kind of we'll see where that idea goes because I think that's definitely potential. And Autumn, I'm going to throw one other thing out that I know Brian and I have dealt with over the last couple of years is, you know, people who want to bring, we'll call it sort of new and innovative sort of funky ideas. Like we've mm -hmm. had somebody who's wanted to do an air screen um, as part of their uh -huh. restaurant. Uh -huh. um, we've had uh -huh. people who want to come in and do, hey, could I use a, um, you know, they're making homes and things out of storage containers now. And they wanted to run a coffee shop, mm -hmm. you know, in a storage container. And it's like, yeah, that sample that you gave me, absolutely intriguing and interesting. But where that doesn't belong on Route 1, probably, um, it doesn't belong district. anywhere. Innovation district? It's well, sort of like if you want things that are trendy or catchy or you yep. use the word, uh, kind of, you know, my opinion is one opinion. I could share it, but that's a good question. Yeah. Exactly. So, so we don't have any, I don't think we have, we don't have to come up with an answer, but we just, I just want to put that on the checklist mm -hmm. of, uh, give Brian and I some some direction. So you're saying like just novelty? Just at the time check, we mm -hmm. have five minutes. Yeah. We have three or four other items on the agenda. Mm -hmm. If we could table us to the next meeting, uh, next item on the agenda would be staff updates. So um, Dave Merrill resigned uh, effective at the end of last year. And so we will, we have a vacancy. Uh, hopefully we'll find out who that vacancy is in the next month. And then after we get that filled, we'll elect a new, you all will elect a new chair. So just an update on that. Um, are there applicants? There are, but we'll probably, and, and I'm not, I won't even say it. There are existing um, <coughs> alternates and applicants. So we will see. <laughs> so, it, I mean, it, it, it takes a couple council meetings for mm -hmm. that to happen, and, and an appointments committee meeting before that. Uh, so, might be a little aggressive for, for February, but okay. it, uh, it shouldn't be too far after that. Okay. Um, and you all set? Yes. Oh. At, as a non agenda item that I'm adding, mm -hmm. <laughs> at, is uh, John's comment as a council from the council? Did you have any remarks you'd like to make? Oh, uh, no, I'm happy to be here, guys. I, 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 I and I understand that some comments I made at the last appointments committee meeting may have been uh, interpreted uh, in, in ways that were not intended. Uh, I think this is a great group. I mean, I think you've got a good mix of experience and, and new blood and uh, technical ability. I, uh, I'm really excited to be here. I'm going to learn a lot. Uh, so thank you. All right. Uh, are there any public comments? Anybody on the public area? There is one person, but I do not see any hands raised. Can I make a public comment? As a, as a just as the public, sure. if that person is not available. Um, I, I guess it's more of a question. Has the town uh, considered an indigenous land acknowledgement statement? I believe that we do make you that statement at conservation. As, do it yeah, in conservation. Has um, council adopted it? Not, not as a policy. Mm -hmm. Something I can bring back now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, so with that, I realize we're a couple minutes early. I didn't want to curtail all of the conversation. Just wanted to make sure we got those items in. Um, can, can I just ask if um, Karen's suggestion is going to be followed through, get the community service boss to take us around Scarborough. We've got we've I've got a month. To drive. <laughs> okay. I've done it before. <laughs> we, we we have we have a month to uh -huh. take a look at some of some of these areas and that could be our, our homework. I think that'd be great if you guys were open to a certain time. I'll set up Karen and I can talk after and Brian and yeah. kind of come up with some targeted areas and 
and then throw some days and times out there. So, you know? so just as a comment, if you're not available, Brian, that's what I do. I, oh, I, I grab this ball bounce. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he has lots of experience in that. It would also be helpful to have, even if, if there's a list of places that we're mm -hmm. going, to have that list in advance. Yes. And perhaps even in photographs. I'm not asking if I'm not if I'm asking for too much. So we can uh this is what we're we'll probably about. just be able to have the list. Good. Uh, but if there are specific places that you all want to make sure are on this, please just send those to me. And list with address so we might be able to do it. Yes, yes. We'll definitely have a list with the address. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to do it at the regular time slot or maybe extend the meeting an hour or in that way? Everybody you can pick a separate day. Yeah, okay. separate the day. separate day, maybe. It would be a Saturday, something like that. For folks who work, it might be difficult. So we'll put some, uh, we'll sync up yeah. and come up with a list and then we'll come up with some ideas for days yeah. and run by you all. Does that sound good? Okay. Sounds fun. So you could go up a brewery tour after. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely necessary. You have to understand the standards. <laughs> yes. A rolling wine tour. <laughs> so we can go see where a brewery might come in. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Okay. Any other comments? I just want to thank Alan for running a fabulous meeting. And um, are you interested in being the chair some stage <laughs> Let's yeah. wait until we have a full chair before we make any decisions. I mean, a full table. So um, uh, with that, it is 930. We'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Marvin and Robin yep. as a second. Thank you. All right. Any discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? So moved. Thank, Thank you, Alan. All. Yeah. Thank you. All. <laughs> I've done it before. Yeah, I was the chair of the planning board. I can't. I don't think so. I don't know.